We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, tonight, Scott Keen and myself are your hosts. My name is Darcy Cole, and I am the Extension Educator in McLeod County. And I will let Scott, um, one of my fabulous volunteers, introduce himself. Good evening, everybody. Um, as, as Darcy said, my name is Scott Keen. Um, <clears throat> I have uh, taught this training um, a number of years for um, McLeod County. And I've also served um, a couple of my kids have been uh, 4-H treasurers um, at both the club and county level. And um, I also tried to help out Darcy doing um, auditing of the county federation books. So uh, it's something that I've got some experience in and I'm hoping to be able to share some of that with you with everyone tonight. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Scott. We appreciate you being here and serving as one of our trainers. All right, if you want to slip. So, <clears throat> Darcy, feel free to jump in too. But um, you know, I think this was um, this covers a lot of the things that people are saying and you know typing into the chat. What does a treasurer do? Um, we there were a couple of you that said. Um, accurate records, um, paying bills on time, making deposits, uh, reconciling. We'll talk about that um, later on in the training. Um, treasurer's report and sharing it with the club at each meeting, um, as well as keeping up-to-date treasurer's books. So just kind of <clears throat> filling in with what um, others of you said, those are all great things and Looking forward to kind of fleshing out some of those ideas and kind of drilling more into some of the things on, you know, what a 4-H treasurer does. And I would say one so, of them, Scott. I'm sorry? Go ahead. You're fine. <laughs> so what we want to talk about tonight, um, a couple different things. Uh, I don't want you guys to be just good treasurers. I want you to be great treasurers. And it's really not that hard. Um, if you follow some simple rules and um, somebody mentioned it, you know, stay on top of things, don't get behind, you can be a great treasurer. Um, there's some simple rules that we'll go through that need to be followed uh, because we're dealing with money, because 4-H is a public organization. There's just some things that we have to do that may be different from how you would do it if you had your own, you know, for those of you that are, that are maybe older, have your own checkbook or your own cash, you know, debit card or credit cards. Um, there are some rules um, specific to 4-H that just need to be followed. Uh, we'll go into some examples of some of the various uh, treasurer activities where we talk about making deposits, writing checks, doing reports, um, and then as part of that, 4-H has come out to come out with um, a number of different Excel forms. Um, and later on, they will include the links where you guys can find those forms. Um, if you don't, for those of you that have been treasurers before and aren't using them, um, I would certainly encourage you to look at them um, and strongly consider using them. For those of you that are first year treasurers, which is a lot of you, um, it's a great habit to get in to start using those forms um, because once you go through and kind of get familiar with how those various forms flow, it makes everything so much easier from whether it be your treasurer's report, your end of year reports that you have to turn into the county extension office. If you use those Excel forms, it makes all of that just very easy and it flows very nicely. So um, how to be a great treasurer. Um, we talked about not just good, but great. Understand what is expected of you. Um, when you were each elected to the treasurer's position, um, they had confidence in your abilities and put you in charge um, of keeping accurate records of the finances of the club or whatever organization um, you're, you are treasurer of. Um, 
you're responsible for keeping those records. Um, you'll have people to help you, um, but it ultimately comes, that's one of your primary responsibilities is keeping those accurate records. You are accounting for the money coming in and the money going out of your 4-H club. Number two, the way to, to be a great treasurer is develop good habits. Um, I think somebody mentioned it, um, don't wait until the end, don't wait till the last minute, stay on top of things, otherwise it can get to be very stressful. There's no reason that it needs to be. Um, but part of that is developing those good habits. Um, you don't want to be putting your treasurer's report together 10 minutes before the meeting is starting. Um, you don't want to forget to deposit checks for three months or deposit cash for three months to the bank. Um, and then suddenly you realize that, hey, we should have enough money, but we have to write out a fruit check to the county and we didn't deposit the checks from the members for who paid for that fruit. Um, develop those good habits, do things um, in a timely manner. And probably one of the most important things is if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, that can be the adult advisor because all of you are not and should not be a treasurer alone. Um, there should be an adult advisor helping you who's also um, you know, working with you, helping to teach you. They are a resource, ask them questions. Club leaders, your parents. Um, for many of you, this is the first time you've done something like this. So it's expected that you're not going to know everything. Um, even you know, we'll get done with this training and I'm sure you're gonna to continue to have questions. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Use one of those resources that you have. A um, couple simple rules that uh, need to be followed. Um, close enough is not good enough. Um, when you're dealing with money, you're dealing with finances, you're dealing with the bank, um, everything goes out to the penny. Um, you are going to be writing, you know, checks to pay for bills, you need to know what that amount of that bill is and that check needs to be written properly. Um, same thing, you're making deposits, you are putting money into the bank, you need to record that information correctly. So when you get the statement from the bank at the end of the month or however often you know, your statements come, um, it needs to be exact. All checks need two signatures. This is a 4-H requirement. Um, <clears throat> both you and the adult advisor. Um, and there are some rules that you can that are we'll um, are laid out in that treasurer's book um, that we'll get to in just a bit. Um, but just know that all checks need both signatures, both the 4-H treasurer and the adult advisor. Um, Another thing that um, seems kind of simple, but uh, just something I want to stress, club approval is required to write checks. It's not your, you only pay, as the treasurer, you only pay what the club authorizes. Um, this process must be followed. So you're not writing out checks if the club hasn't had a meeting, hasn't had a motion to pay for something, um, it's been approved, you know, in advance perhaps that, you know, we'll pay up to, you know, X number of dollars or whatever, but you are an agent or you're acting on behalf of the club. And so when you're writing out those checks, you are, you are um, following what the club has already approved um, to be paid. That's why, you know, as part right before this, we had the secretary's um, training and, um, and all of you, you know, you, you will go through and People will make a motion at your meeting, bills will be presented um, and motion will be made and passed hopefully to pay those bills. That's what you follow. So you're not writing out checks without that club approval. Um, and the last really isn't a rule, but just something to understand is that your work 
is going to be reviewed by multiple people. Um, that with the help of you know your adult advisor, they will be there um, at the end of every year um, as part of your club chartering process. Um, it's required that your club um, treasurer's information or all of the information in your treasurer's book be turned into the county and um, the extension staff will review your um, treasurer's report or your treasurer's book, including all of the you know, information and stuff like that. So again, that gets, your work's gonna, people are gonna look at your work. Um, and so that's why it's important that the things that you do are accurate and correct. Um, at this point, I think we're going to, um, for those of you that have um, your 4-H treasurer's book, um, you can grab those and we'll get into those in just a little bit. We'll go through a couple different common activities. Um, there is a online treasurer training as well. Um, and so for those of you that want to review something or go through, you weren't, you know, we took something we talked about tonight, you may not be exactly clear or you have some more questions. Um, I would encourage you to use that interactive training. Um, and it's an online uh, thing that you can do. The whole thing takes about um, 60 minutes or so. Um, but you can, you know, look at spe specific things that uh, you want to cover. And this also includes here are those links to those Excel documents that I talked about. Um, and we'll go through those as well. So um, these are kind of at a very, very high level the treasurer activities um, that we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, the first one, uh, especially for those of you that are first time treasurers or, and were, or weren't treasurer last year, one of the things that you have to do is fill out what they call a signature card at the bank. And what this signature card is, is it's a, it's a document that the bank keeps that proves that you are authorized to sign checks on behalf of your 4-H club. Um, and so before you start signing checks, um, and so for those of you that were elected and you know started in October or here in November, um, this should be one of the first things that you do if you haven't done that yet, is go to the bank. Um, normally, um, you have, you know, you can take your parents or your adult leader along with you as well. The, um, and one of the things that you'll want to bring that a lot of banks uh, will require is a copy of the secretary's report that shows you were elected treasurer. Um, because what the bank is looking for is they want to know who is authorized to sign checks on behalf of, you know, your 4 H club and the way that you prove that you're authorized to sign checks is by having a copy of the secretary's report that shows, you know, the election of officers and, you know, um, Jane Smith was elected treasurer, you're Jane Smith, you bring a copy of that treasurer's report, or I'm sorry, of that secretary's report to the bank, they'll keep a copy or make a copy of that with the paperwork and the signature, and then they will also make you, uh, write your name because if there's ever a question they might at some point compare signatures um, on the bottom of the check to the signature card at the bank um, very very rare but that's really what the purpose of the signature card is um, could i get uh just maybe a, a quick um, thumbs up from people if they've already completed or a yes or no if they've already completed the signature card piece. And you can put that in the chat um, as well. So 
And you know, and every bank is going to be a, a little bit different of how that process looks. So just make sure that you're checking with your club leader to find out what they need. Some, a lot of them do ask for a secretary's report, as Scott said, but I've also heard of some clubs or some clubs that haven't had a bank that's been real strict about it and they haven't needed as much documentation. But so far it looks like everybody is on their bank account. So that's a good first step. So very good. A few awesome. of you not. That is so. exactly. And if you are not, I would recommend that you check with your club leader as soon as possible after this training to get that process taken care of. So for those of you that um, have your uh, treasurer's book, you can please go to page eight of that um, and it talks about what the first thing we're, we're going to do is we're going to talk about how you as a treasurer handle income or money coming into the club um, and so at the bottom of page eight of your treasurer's book um, we're going to walk through a couple of scenarios and um, how it how you uh, take money into your club. Why don't you, um, if you guys want to hop off mute real quick, or if one or two of you, what are ways that um, you take money in? What forms of money do you take in as a as a club treasurer? Or you can put it in the chat as well. Um, you can take in cash or club dues. Okay. Fundraisers. Fundraisers, yep. How? What are ways that people can pay you? Somebody mentioned cash. What would be the other very common way that people would give you money? A check. Correct. And so... Um, what we're going to do now is, um, and you can see it, it should be up on your screen as well. We're gonna um, go through handling income uh, from the club. And so as you can see there, suppose you had a club meeting and you decided to go bowling. And so, and as part of that, the members have to pay a certain amount. The club is gonna pay some and the members are gonna pay some. And so. It was decided that the club would pay six dollars, uh, or the the people were responsible for paying six dollars per person. And so, in this first scenario, um, here we have ex Mary Farmer wants to pay for her three children and herself to go bowling. Um, she writes a check payable for twenty four dollars. And so, this is very common. This is what a check that you receive is gonna look like. And as you can see here, it's made out to the Lucky Culver 4-H Club. Um, it's for the amount. And you'll notice, and we'll talk about this in a minute, where here you write out $24 in this case, using numbers, but on the next line, you write it out in words. Does anybody know why you do it like that? You can either unmute or put it in the chat. Um, if you forget a decimal, if you're writing a number, so instead of $24, it could be 2,400. Correct. Um, that's, that's exactly very one good reason. It also helps prevent if you had um, somebody who wasn't terribly honest and they would take like that $24 and maybe put a one in front of it and make it $124. Um, trying to, you know, you write out somebody a check and they try to cheat and make the check out for more money. So when you're writing out a check or when we get to a receipt in just a little bit, 
um, you, 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 you write out the amount in both numbers and then on the next line, um, spelling it out in words. And you'll notice how they do the cents. They do it as something over 100. So if you had a check that was for $24.12, for example, you would write out 24 and 12 over 100. That's just the convention that they use on how you write out the words um, for the check amounts. So in this case, we've gotten uh, one check here for $24. And we'll go to the next page. And now another member is going to pay us in cash. And so they are, they are paying for three people. And so if we're at $6 a person, that's going to be three times six, um, which is $18. And so just as a good rule of thumb, what they're recommending here is you all, when somebody pays you in cash, you always count out that money back to them to make sure that they paid the right amount. So what they're showing there is they gave you a $10 bill, a $5 bill, and three $1 bills. And so what you would do to make sure that you agree that that's the right amount, you would take that money and put down $10, and then the five would be $15, and then the one would be 16, 17, and 18. Um, that way it just, it just ensures that they've paid you the right amount and you both agree. The next thing that you should do when you receive cash is you give that person a receipt. Um, as part of your treasurer's, um, uh, the things that you get when you become the treasurer, hopefully one of those things was a receipt book. <coughs> Excuse me. And what a receipt book is, is it documents incoming cash because the receipt book is something where you, the person who gives you the cash, since it, they didn't write out a check, they don't have a record of it, you give them a receipt that documents what they gave you. And so what this is showing is what a blank receipt looks like. And so what I want you, for those of you that do have a book, what I'd like you to do is fill out this receipt and so we'll go through it. So if we go back here, this was the 4-H meeting was on October 7th. So take your book and we're going to put in a date received of October 7th. We received this money from Larry Fields. And how much did Larry Fields pay us? You can, you can, if you look back, what did we count out back to him? $18. $18, exactly. So just like we were writing a check or receiving a check, you would put the $18 here using 18.00. And then down here, you would write out 18 and zero one hundredths dollars. And this was for bowling money, and then you sign it. So I'll give you guys just a second to get done with that one. And then I'll show what your receipt should look like. When you're all done, your receipt should look like this. It's got your the date you received it, the dollar amount. Here I put 18 and zero one hundredths dollars. And you also notice you normally put like a line um, to fill out the rest of it. So there's no blank space left on the line. Um, again, that's just a convention that you use when you're writing out receipts and checks. Um, 
and then there's bowling and um, my, the treasurer's signature for that. So you might think, okay, I, I've got $24 in a check, $18 in cash, ooh, I'm all done, right? Unfortunately, your work is just beginning as the treasurer because um, this, what you will find is this is but one of several forms um, that you do need to complete. One of the forms that you need to complete is this itemized income form. And hopefully all of you can see that. Let me make it just a little bit bigger. This is one of those Excel forms that I talked about that is part of your treasurer's record. And so what you're doing is documenting the money that you're going to be depositing into your checking account or your say in, into your account. And so this form is one of the things that get in, that gets included in your treasurer's packet. And so here you can see I've got my Mary Farmer, it's a bowling. Um, the check was for $24 and this was her check number. So if we go back to this, you will see here's check number 3294, which is Mary's check number. That's what I'm putting here in this income form. Um, same thing here for Larry Fields, um, bowling. Uh, since this was in cash, I put my $18 that he there. And here's my cash receipt. That goes back to this receipt here that I completed and gave to Larry Fields. So this form is what you use and, and include as part of the, the activity for October. So you're gonna be printing that out and putting that in with the rest of the activity that happens in, in your October report. And now you might think, whoa, I'm done now. No, not yet, even more. Um, one of the things to actually deposit this information or deposit these things into the bank, if you go to page 13 in your treasurer's book, there's a thing called a deposit ticket. If you look in your checkbook behind your checks, you normally have these deposit tickets. And so this is the, the form that you fill out to um, actually turn into the bank with the cash and the checks. Um, and so because I want to make sure that we've got enough time this is what a completed deposit ticket looks like. This is the piece of paper that you give to the bank. Um, it's got you know the date that you're making the deposit, um, cash, checks, the total deposit. Okay. And we're just about done. The last piece that you need to record is actually here in your Excel checkbook register. Um, you may also be doing it in the front of the checkbook in the, in the checkbook register itself. But again, if you use this checkbook ledger, it will automatically do the math for you. It keeps track of um, your running balance. Um, it just makes things very simple um, to put together the rest of the report. So, I am, there's my $24 check, my $18 in cash, um, they are deposits, 
And as you can see, it automatically increases my, my checkbook balance because I made those deposits. I've got one question yet. What's one thing? So if you go ahead and do all these things, is are you all done or is there any other thing you actually need to do? Um, you need to write your report for the club. Well, even before that, just as it concerns this deposit, what do you actually have to do with the deposit? Where do you have to take it or send it? Uh, you, you have, have to, to take it to the bank. Perfect, because I've seen a lot of treasurers where they do all they do everything right. They do all these things, but then we come to find out that they never actually took the check to the bank or took the cash to the bank. If you don't do it and, and give it to the bank, the bank has no idea about it, obviously, and it's never going to show up in your account. So that's the, the important piece that make sure that you do that um, and you know, make, actually make your deposit. All right, let me, so that kind of covers the income. Oh, the last thing I guess I didn't cover, um, on that, like that check from Mary Farmer, what you also have to do is something called endorsing the check. Um, and that's doing something to the back of the check. So if you flip the check over, um, at the top part of the check, you'll see an area that says endorsement or endorsing area. A lot of clubs may have a stamp that you stamp the back of the check that says you're depositing this. If you don't have a stamp, um, then normally do something like this, where you write for deposit only at whatever bank you're depositing it in, the name of your 4-H club, and then your signature as treasurer. Um, endorsing is just um, a record that shows you've deposited that check into your account. Um, and so, like I said, you may have a club stamp that you stamp the back of the checks, and that would have been something, you know, with the rest of the treasurer's materials you got um, when you were, um, when you became treasurer, or do this piece where you mark it for deposit only at the bank. Yeah, and the reason for that is just simply if you lose the check, then, um, you know, if you drop it on the street, somebody could pick up that check and they could sign it over and forge on the back and then they could deposit themselves. So it's so to keep you as a club safe, but also to keep that person who gave you the check safe from having it deposited by the wrong person. So that kind of um, covers how you handle um, income. The other big thing that you have to do, obviously, is handle expenses. Um, and again, just like in handling income, um, there is paperwork that you need to do that documents, whether you're making a deposit or um, writing out a check. There's much more to do than just actually writing the check. A lot of being a treasurer is doing this additional paperwork, um, keeping track of the receipts that somebody turns in to document the expense, um, the you know, the bill that you're paying. Um, those are all the things. Keeping all of that together is a lot of what you're supposed to is what you need to do as a treasurer and keep that in your treasurer's book because that's what when it gets to be the end of the year and the extension office is looking at your treasurer's book, that's the documentation they're looking for. They're looking for these forms or these receipts that there's documentation that authorized you to pay this, that this was a valid expense. Um, one of those forms is, and I don't have it open. is this an expense reimbursement form. And Darcy has a link to it um, that you can find um, at the end of our, at the end of the presentation. Um, this is a great form that uh, we put together in our club and use <clears throat> that a lot of the expenses that you're going to be paying as the club treasurer 
are reimbursing for other things. You know, maybe somebody bought gifts for the Christmas program or, um, or the Christmas party, or, um, you know, somebody bought the candy and balloons or pizza for the birthday party. Um, you know, whatever, whatever your club is doing, um, a lot of the things that you are going to be paying as a treasurer is reimbursing um, expenses that have already been paid. This form is used to help document what those expenses were. Um, this form is intended to be completed by the person asking to be reimbursed. Um, so they're filling in their name, their, what the date of the expense was, um, what the purpose was, what the amount was. Um, and then if you look at the bottom of this form, again, it has some things where they're documenting who's signing this, um, has this been approved, when it was paid. Um, so if we get to, so I encourage you guys to look at a form like this, consider using something like that. Um, it doesn't have to be that form, but it's just a good order's sake that you have that that documents why you're paying these expenses. I think it also just makes your job easier because if somebody hands you a stack of receipts at a club meeting, this keeps them together and then you can verify the amount on their seats with the amount that that person thinks that they should be receiving back. Um, and like Scott said, we'll share this with you when we share all the other materials from training and you can make a copy of it and edit it and use it however you see fit with your club. So we're going to hop over to, for those of you that have never written a check, um, let's go to page 10 in your um, treasurer training. And this goes through this scenario. So um, it was moved and seconded at your last club meeting to spend up to $25 on supplies for the new club treasurer. Um, you and the adult advisor met at the local office supply store on October 10th to make the purchase. The total cost of the supplies was $23.27. Um, and so in order to pay Kenmore office supplies, you're going to need to write out a check because, um, and remember, we talked about this expense was already approved at your prior meeting up to $25. And so your expense was $23.27. So you've been given the authorization to write a check. And so we're going to write this check to Kenmore Office Supplies. And the amount was twenty-seven or $23.27. And so... I'll give you just a minute to figure out how to write out the check. It's very similar to the receipt that we just went through, um, but I'll just give you a minute to write it out. Um, again, the pay, the it was Kenmore Office Supplies and twenty three dollars and twenty seven cents. All right. So hopefully the check you guys completed should look very similar to this. First up the top, you include the date of when you're writing out the check, who you're writing out the check to. In this case, it was Kenmore Office Supplies. 23.27 was the dollar amount. So I write that using numbers as well as $23.27 over 100. Memo is supplies. And there's one thing wrong with this check. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with it? 
This is tricky. Scott talked about it earlier when he was giving you some of the overview of kind of the guidelines and it was a special 4-H requirement. There's only one signature. Very good. Correct. There's only one signature on this. So um, there should be two signatures, both the um, you as the, as the treasurer um, and then whoever the adult advisor is. Um, so all checks require two signatures. Good job. So um, just like before, you would think, okay, I'm done now. I've filled out the, I've written out the check. I've written out the check. I've got my receipt, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to keep that. You might think I'm done. Well, unfortunately you're not because just like where you are recording your deposits in your checkbook ledger, you also have to record the checks that you write. Um, so here you can see, I'll blow that up a little bit so it's a little bit easier for people to see, where I'm putting in the date I wrote out the check, the check number itself. In this case, it was check number 103. And what you'll find is all checks have numbers on them. That's how checks are identified. And so um, you want to record that, who the check was to, what the check was for, and the amount. And the way that this um, checkbook ledger works is if you put the amount here, it subtracts it from your balance. If you put the amount here as income, it adds it to your balance. And so as you can see, it automatically keeps my running balance um, as I enter things into my checkbook register. Does anybody have any questions um, right now before we get on to, we kind of went through handling deposits, um, you know, handling expenses or writing checks. Does anybody have any questions or things that um, they're unclear of or would like more information about? I'm not seeing anything coming into the chat yet, but if you do have questions, put them in there and we'll be sure to answer them. Perfect. All right. Um, before we're, as we're kind of winding down here, um, one of the things that is important is the monthly treasurer's report. And it's intended to let the club know what financial things have happened since the last meeting. Um, you should always have a starting balance. You should always have the activity that's happened and you should always report the ending balance. And this sometimes is, is maybe one of the hardest things for new treasurers. They go, you know, I don't know how to do this treasurer's report. Um, I don't know what I'm supposed to say or what I'm supposed to do. Um, and that is why I strongly encourage you to use, again, another one of these Excel forms um, that is the monthly treasurer's report. Um, this is a blank one. And what I'm going to do is open up one that I kind of put together. So um, the way this report is intended to be used is you kind of start at the top and work your way down. And that's why it's very simple. And I'll show you an example. So, you know, at the beginning of the meeting, you do your roll call, you do your flag pledges, things like that. And then they normally, the next two things are the treasurer's report and the secretary's report. And so for the treasurer's report, all you would do for something like this is you would say, this is the treasurer's report for 
whatever the date of, the, of your meeting is, whatever, you know, whatever tonight is. Um, the previous meeting on October 10th, 20, or October 7th, excuse me, 2020, our beginning balance was $669.67. We received $24 from Mary Farmer, $18 from Larry Fields for a total of $42. Our club paid $72 to Happy Time Bowling and $23.27 to Kenmore Office for a total of $95.27. Our closing balance is $614.40. All of this information here comes from your October report here. So if you notice, our October opening balance was 669.67. There's, so our meeting was on 10-7. There's been no activity before 10-7, so our previous meeting balance was 669.67, just like it says here. Then we had these two deposits. Well, what do we have over here? We've got two deposits, one from Mary Farmer, one from Larry Fields. Here's that same information. What did we have for expenses from the last meeting, since the last meeting? Well, the last meeting was on 10-7, and we paid these two bills on 10-8 and 10-10. So those are going to be listed here. If you put in this information, it automatically calcs your ending, you know, your, your closing checking account balance. That matches here. And so it makes giving your treasurer's report extremely easy if you use these forms and it kind of walks you through what you have to say as treasurer, what the day is, the opening balance was this at the you know, previous meeting. These are your, these are your, this is your income. These are your expenses. And then when you do your treasurer's report for the month of December, you make a new one of these. So your previous meeting now would become November 10th. Your opening balance is this number right here, is 616.40, that comes up here. Again, whatever income, if you had any, whatever expenses. And so it makes giving that treasurer's report uh, maybe a little less scary because you have all the information. And so if you use all of these forms, one form kind of just flows into the next form. So I definitely encourage you to look at those download those forms and um, consider using them. Um, I know we're getting short on time. I do want to cover just real quickly, um, and this might be something that you want to look at a little bit more in that treasurer's online treasurer's training is bank statement reconciliation. Um, reconciliation is just a big fancy word. What is it and why is it necessary? All it does is what reconcil bank statement reconciliation is, is you're comparing the balance that you have that you're showing in your checkbook and comparing that to the balance that the bank says. Um, Real quick, can anybody tell me why those two might be different? Why would your checkbook balance be different than what the bank says? Any thoughts? Because you have, because you read a check that hasn't been cashed yet. Very good. That's probably the biggest reason why. So as soon as you write out a check to, you know, Happy Time Bowling Alley, you write out a check for $72. 
that comes out of in this in your checkbook balance that check you know that seventy two dollars has already been deducted from your balance. The bank, until Happy Time Bowling takes that check to the bank and deposits that check into their account, the bank doesn't take the money out of your account. And so until that check gets cashed, the bank is going to actually say, well, no, you have, in this case, $72 more than, you know, what you're saying. And so does it mean that there's a problem or that somebody is wrong? The answer is no. It's just, it means that either there's been deposits that haven't been credited to your account or checks that haven't, you know, um, whoever you wrote those checks to, they haven't cashed those checks yet. And so all you're doing is comparing your balance to the bank's balance and determining why there's a difference. Um, just like the other forms, there's a monthly reconciliation form as well. Um, and so here again, you put in your ending balance from your checkbook ledger. You subtract any deposits that haven't been credited by the bank yet. You subtract any um, outstanding checks, checks that haven't been cashed yet. That's in the lower portion of this form. And so I encourage you to take a look at um, kind of that uh, bank reconciliation piece on the online training. Um, talk to your adult leader, um, your parents, if you have questions. Um, but, you know, it doesn't mean, I want to stress, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It doesn't mean that there's a problem. You, what you're doing is you're just making sure that your records agree with the bank. And if they don't, these are the reasons why. Um, again, this is a link to um, that treasurer's book um, and as well as the online training. Um, encourage you guys to take a look at that. Um, and, you know, it's a, some great information. Um, also the copies of those Excel documents that you can download um, and encourage, strongly encourage you to use those and hopefully um, kind of explain why tonight that can be very useful and it really can make your job a lot easier. Um, it eliminates the, you know, the simple math errors, but then it also flows from one month to the next, especially like, for example, if you take a look at, um, you'll notice this checkbook ledger, there's one for each month. And so, you know, here we're ending the month at $616.40. If you look at November, it automatically brings in that $614.40. And so, you know, it will do the same thing as you go to each month. The other important thing that this spreadsheet gives you is this year end financial summary. Um, that's again, one of the things that needs to get turned into the county at the end of the year. So, you know, the 4-H year ends at the end of September. Um, and if you use this checkbook register, um, it will automatically fill in all of this information for you. It makes your job a whole lot easier. You don't have to go back and manually add up every month on what all of your expenses were and what your total income was. It takes care of all of that for you. You'll notice, um, you know, we only have October, but we had $42 in income from, those, from that check and that cash. It automatically fills in that amount for you. Um, and it will do that for all 12 tabs or all 12 months of the year. Uh, there's the expense uh, reimbursement form we talked about. Um, encourage you guys, if you're interested in that, um, you can also download that. And with that, um, we'll kind of um, open it up again here for questions. 
anything that people might have or um, something that you're not clear about, uh, information that we can hopefully um, try to give you. Hey, Scott, have any I have a question for you, and maybe you already answered it. And I'm sorry, I had a kid brushing their teeth. I'm getting ready for bed. Oh, no problem. Um, that yearly form, um, I saw it said tax year on it. When does that form get completed? So that gets completed at the end of September, so at the end of the 4-H year. Um, and so that's one of the things that gets turned in with your club charter um, and needs to be completed um, as part of the chartering documentation for the for the coming year. Unless, is there anything Thank else you, you want to add with that, Darcy? Or no, I think just to note, um, you know, with the 4-H year, we follow a different year than the rest of the world does. Uh, our 4-H year is October 1 to September 30th. So yes, you'll fill that out after your September club meeting and any bills that you have with that. And then it'll go in as part of your charter. So very good question, Angie throw at you. Um, I personally feel like treasurer is like the hardest of all of the offices. It has a lot of things that you have to be accountable for and a lot of work that you have to do in between club meetings. So, you know, just know that people are there to help you and do your best as you kind of work through. But now is a great time to ask any questions you have. As Scott mentioned, there are online trainings that are available um, at the links that were shared in the chat, but those links will also be part of materials that will come to you after this training. So if you are still feeling a little uncertain of your role, I would encourage you to check out some of those trainings. Check out previous year's treasures books. Most clubs are pretty good about handing off the book <coughs> from the previous year to the new person. Definitely use that as an example, assuming that it was a good treasures book. And then as Scott mentioned, ask questions, ask your club leader, your past treasurer, um, that adult advisor person, your extension office, whoever you need to, to make sure that you're doing things properly. Um, because I know that um, it's always nice as extension staff to be able to give you back your treasures book at the end of the year after reviewing it and telling you that you did a fabulous job. And as long as you follow the things that Scott shared with you, you will do a fabulous job. Um, good luck with everything. You guys, I know, will do an awesome job. You just need to have confidence that you can do that. And again, thank you, Scott, for doing our training tonight. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. Hopefully it was useful. Mm -hmm.